this video, we're gonna break down the absolute gold mine that you can find in low-income neighborhoods. Most people focus on middle class, upper middle class, sometimes wealthy, but really the lower class is the best option. Lower income families stand the most to gain and you can bring them the most amount of service. And most importantly, you're also gonna see how much more airtime you get with these individuals. If time is money, they got lots of it. All right, let's run it. So right now, we're in the heart of San Bernardino. It's gonna be a lower income neighborhood. There's gonna be a lot of differences that we're gonna have. People in different incomes value different things. So it's gonna be important that we tailor our pitch to each one of these stratas. Oh, he's good. That's a cute dog. Hey, I'm sorry to bother. I'm just trying to make sure I'm in the right place. Is this still the Torres's? Yeah. It is? Okay, are you Laura or? Oh, she's not here right now? I'm sorry to bug you guys late. We're the ones who are doing your guys' new power project that got sent out to you guys. Uh, we're, we're filming right now just for our training to show how this is gonna be changing everything out here in your guys' neighborhood as far as how your power gets here. When is she around? Because it's pretty important. Okay, is there a vehicle I should watch out for just to know when she's around? Because we're gonna be working out here a lot over the next week. Is there like a certain type that she normally drives? Like a s Suburban or no? Uh, her and her husband share a car. Gotcha, and what was your name? I'm sorry. Daisy. Daisy, nice to meet you. I'm Johnny. Her husband, Sierra, I don't know if you want to talk to him. Uh, yeah, that would be fine too. That'd be great. Awesome. That line right there, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't even introduce myself. My name's Johnny, what was your name? If you put that towards the end of your conversation versus right at the front of, hey, I'm Johnny, nice to meet you. We're out here doing this and this. Sometimes reversing it, it allows you to break up the pace of everything from serious to kind of like laughing and hey, we're both people, you know what I mean? All right, now in lower income neighborhoods, you're gonna have to prospect pretty effectively. Um, if you see a younger person come to the door, don't tell them, hey, we're dropping by for the solar programs because what's gonna happen is they're gonna go into the house and they're gonna tell whoever the real decision maker is that, hey, someone from solar came by, which isn't really a differentiating factor for you. And so what you have to do is you have to ask some good questions Find out what vehicles they're driving, when they'll be back, because most vehicles are parked in front of their house and not in a garage. And most importantly, have the name of the person you spoke to put in your notes. So that way when you stop by, you can go, hey, did Kimberly let you know that I'd be dropping by? Did she tell you what we were out here doing? Okay, it's super important. I'll be quick and then jump right into your pitch. How's it going? Are you Laura's husband then or? Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know if you guys got the notice. Do you handle the Edison bill here or does or does Laura normally handle it? The electric bill with the power lines, we're changing how the power is getting to the house. Okay. This is happening because of a state mandate. Do you know about what the electric bill is here? Nah, to be honest. Okay. I just, like, they tell me how much, how much I gotta give, uh, send out the money. I'm just trying to find out who has access to the, their bill. Okay. And so if you were me, wouldn't it be a good time to, would it be best to talk to Laura on this? Honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> you don't know? Yeah, because, uh, so I'm just confused, still trying to figure out what okay. you guys are. Cause you, you, oh, explained, sure. you explained to me what you said, but at the same time, a lot of what you okay. said is completely like, you know, I have no understanding. On oh, okay. I, I'm sorry. I'm purposely being obscure here and obtuse because I haven't figured out if he's actually the decision maker yet. So I'm trying to give him just enough explanation of the problem we're solving because that's the root of this. And this is where most people make the mistake. They go straight into, Hey, we're the solar guys. We're here to lower your bill. In California, it's a little different. In California, people have heard that pitch a million times. What you need to do is get to the root of the problem. You need to get them on the complaint train, right? They need to understand what the problem is. Really simple what's happening is we have a shortage of electricity here. In, La in all like Los Angeles, San Bernardino, all these areas have a shortage of electricity. That's why they're hitting you with that fee where they said like, don't use your power between four and 9 p.m. Gotcha. Yeah, and the grid, which is pretty old, it goes through a lot of stress when it has this huge surge, mm -hmm. but at like 2 a.m. no one's using power right and so what's happening is is they're shipping your power huge distances actually from arizona is where a lot of electricity mm -hmm. comes from and so when the farther you push electricity the more of it you lose and if it works out uh, the benefit for us is we get to use your property to put the panels on and get you cheaper electricity and if you guys are paying a ton for your electricity we might not be able to help you Okay. Um, if you guys have already done a pretty good job keeping the bill low, we might be able to help you. The intro of this pitch is going to remain the same regardless of someone's socioeconomic position. If they're rich, if they're poor, the problem remains the same for all people. The difference is, though, is with people in poorer neighborhoods, my focus is going to be on a couple of things. It's going to be on savings. The other thing we're going to focus on, too, is any parts of their infrastructure that are old or looking like they're decaying, because sometimes I'll come across homes where they absolutely need a main panel upgrade, and it looks pretty dangerous almost, and that gives me the opportunity to 
upgrade some of their electrical that they might need as well. Where it is in a richer neighborhood, the focus is gonna be a lot more on power backup for a lot of their essentials, keeping the refrigerators backed up, keeping those things backed up because they've invested a lot in those assets. And what we can do is we can swing back by tomorrow night around eight. All right, well, if you could find out who's on title of the house yeah, for yeah. me, that would be super helpful. Okay. Um, and then all we need to do is just look at a picture of the utility bill. And then if you get the utility bill beforehand, if you just send a picture of it when you guys get a chance, that'd be great. Well, hi, Tim, I appreciate your time. You have a great yeah, night, no okay, man? You guys have a good Cheers, day. man. He's gonna be mad, I can tell. I'm Johnny, by the way. You're, you're John with an H? Me too. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you. this. Oh, what is that on that side? Am I crazy? Oh, shoot. <laughs> That's interesting. Hey, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm in the right place. Is this the Johnsons? John Johnson? Yeah. Oh, it is. Cool. I, I can't really see it because I'm on the best site. And so I apologize for even for dropping in so late. You guys have just been our last stop out. And uh, we're doing what, the update on your guys' power grid. You guys are my last stop out. This line will help you knock for at least another hour and a half to two hours if you use it regularly. Hey, sorry to bug you guys late. You guys are my last stop out. What I've done is I've addressed the objection of why I'm out late and that they're also hard to get in touch with. I don't know if you guys were felt the effects of it like about a month ago, a little less than that, they had to update one of these transformers over here and they did the power shut off. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, it happened throughout the night until the early morning. Did you guys get the notice about what's happening with this with SB350, the bill? Shoot, okay. We're talking with everybody that hasn't responded back out to it yet. So there's a really important thing that's going on. It's probably mailed out to you at some point. If you, you guys own this house, right? Okay, we have a shortage of electricity now, and that's because we shut down the San Onofre power plant. So you know how they said don't use power between 4 and 9 p.m.? Uh -huh. That's because of the shortage of electricity. Uh -huh. So what we're doing is really simple. All the homes that have lower utility bills, yeah. we've said do not buy or lease solar panels because you guys are already have the opportunity to be funded into this program uh -huh. where we own the equipment the same way the utility does, and we're doing the power backup on houses so that you guys do not have blackouts. What's about the average bill for you guys now? Okay, that's good. But if your bill's too high, if your guys' roof is uninsurable, um, then you guys won't qualify for it. Um, oh. This is designed specifically with people with lower utility bills. Oh, yep, it also has to save you guys money. So if it doesn't save you guys money day one, we also can't do it in order to receive the funding on it. That's just the rules. Before you solar bros that are not from California throw a tantrum in the comments section, I wanna be really clear about why what I'm saying here is true. If I take someone's utility bill that was once $200 a month, and that customer was really good at paying that $200 a month, and then I give them a PPA that produces the same amount of power, but the new bill is now $350 a month, the people that issue the financing for this are gonna look at this and go, you just almost doubled this guy's bill. The odds of him staying on top of a bill that's now 350 is a lot less than if you would have taken his bill down to 150. And so they're not gonna approve the financing for that project. I can't double someone's expense and expect them to be able to get approval on funding. And that's why they require us on PPAs to upload the utility bill so that they can cross-reference it. They can go, oh, this guy was really good at spending $200 a month on his utility bill. Certainly, he's not gonna default on a bill that's 150. That same certainty doesn't exist when I take them from 200 to 350. I'm gonna take a look at that meter really quick. Is there any vicious attack dog that's gonna? Uh, no. Okay, cool. Um, and then if you could pull up the bill, I'll just take a quick glance. I don't even need to like meet, I just need to look at it. And then, um, and then I'll be out of your hair and then we can take you off the list on this. So I'm Johnny, by the way, you're, are you, you're John with an H? Yeah. Me too, <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> I think you just pull this. Put on the side on that side. Oh shoot. <laughs> it's like a whole box that thing's in. That's interesting. That's interesting. Look at that. Looks like a pair of shutters. Is there a way that this opens though? Am I crazy? Oh, right there, I hear it. Oh, it's actually not so bad. This looks like they've updated it. I always want to over document, by the way, and I recommend you do the same. If you want to be good at helping your installations go clean, always over document, ask questions about certain things. Um, say, hey, like pay attention to for gas meters where those might be located. A lot of the times uh, cities will put all sorts of interesting rules around the electrical layouts to try to slow the process or you know, collect a fee. But that one looks actually just fine. Cause you guys got a kind of interesting thing on here. Did you did you ever update this yourself? This electric just box? Just the panel, yeah. Yeah, the panel, good. Uh -huh. That's, I've been yeah. dealing, I was surprised because when I first looked at this box, I was a little nervous because I could just see it closed. Oh yeah. And then, no, that was a relief because you have open slots here. If you go to your SDG and E account, yeah, the I view my, here. there's a little view my bill tab. Oh yeah. Yeah, so you've, I can see you've actually done a really good job with your on-peak and off-peak hours. Nice work. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, what's the best number to text you at if it doesn't work out? Cool, and if it works out, since you're already paying into uh -huh. it, it won't cost you guys anything to do it. And then, will you be around like probably Thursday night, right around this time? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, we'll drop by and we'll sh uh, show you guys okay. what the report looks like. And okay. if it makes sense, great. If not, you'll get a text message ahead of time, okay? Oh, okay. All right, John, All right. nice to meet you. Okay, nice All right, see you uh, on Thursday. Okay. Cheers. Yeah, did you guys see that bill that was sent out? It was called SB 350. It's a law that got passed in California. Um, it's a, it has to do with the change of the, the power grid. Yeah, you, I don't know if you guys, did you guys have any outages in the last little while? Or you guys haven't had any recently, right? There may be some as they update the grid, um, just because the grid is pretty old. And there's been a lot of people that moved into California and they shut down a lot of the power plants, like the San Onofre power plant. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Yeah, so when they shut those down, it created a shortage of power out here. And so you guys are designated as a low power usage community, meaning a lot of these homes aren't using a ton of electricity right now. What's a low power usage community, you ask? Well, that's the community I'm in in that moment. They don't have pools, they don't have electric vehicles. So who designated them as a low power usage community? I did, 30 minutes ago. And why? Because I'm trying to get in front of the, my bill's too low to benefit from solar objection. Really simple what's happening is they have a shortage of power. That's why they say don't use the electricity between four and 9 p.m. So what is about the average electric bill for you guys here? About 400 a month. What's happening is really simple. So 60% of the power needs to come from a local renewable source. Um, but what they've said is, is for these types of neighborhoods, it doesn't make sense for you guys to go and buy or lease solar panels. So don't do that. You guys, you guys haven't done that for the house here, have you? Okay, good. Um, if you guys would have done it prior to April, it probably would have been premature um, because what's happening now and what they're rolling out for all of these homes is two things. They want their power to come from a local source and they also want to make sure you have battery backup on the homes. So that way, if there's ever a power outage, you have backup electricity. Does that make sense? And so because blackouts are becoming more and more frequent, I don't know if you pay attention to the news, um, but they've become more and more frequent. That's just because the grid's pretty old. The reason I'm discussing power outages is they are becoming more common. And I'm also in the career of spreading fear because without fear, there is no action. Do you think that Afghanistan would have happened without a 9-11? No, remember, create a problem, solve a problem. Instead of you, like, rather than you buying or leasing solar panels the same way you didn't have to buy or lease these power lines, you just buy your electricity from that equipment and we own it and we maintain it. And then that's the trade off is you get a reduction on your bill because right now inflation, I don't know if you know, have you noticed it when you're at the store and everything, everything's been going up and up, right? Yeah, so a lot of people out in the neighborhood have been stressed because some folks out here are living on social security and they've been watching. Oh, are you? Oh, really, are you? Couldn't guess that one. I guess the lesson, don't judge a book by its cover is probably not accurate when it comes to door to door sales. You actually wanna gather as much information as you can about the book based on its cover. Anyway, anybody who even says that is silly because that's our brain's way of deducing where somebody might be from and what their professions might be. Do you have your online Edison account? Do you, do you ever log into it to see your bill? Don't. You don't? Who typically handles it? My daughter. Your daughter, is she around? Okay. When is she typically in? Because if she's the one that handles the bill, uh, that's this is going to be important for you guys. I'm so rude. I, I, I didn't catch your name. I'm Johnny. What was your name? Your Eduardo. Eduardo Lopez? Yep. Nice to meet you, Eduardo. Um, if you were me, when would be a good time to drop by and speak with your daughter? I think tomorrow she's her day off. Tomorrow's your day off? Okay, cool. It's a lot easier to just say, hey, if you were me, when would be the best time to be able to catch them at home? That's gonna make them think about that person's schedule, um, maybe even what mood they're typically in around that schedule. I've heard people say like, yeah, my wife doesn't get home until 6.30, but she's usually been in traffic all day and she's normally pretty grouchy, so you'll have to make it quick. Is there a vehicle that she normally drives that I can look out for? Like what? A vehicle that she drives, like a big like red truck or something oh, like no, that? no, no. A big, big enclave, yeah, okay. All right, just tell her don't shoot me when I stop by, all right? <laughs> Thank you. Talk to you later. Have a nice night. Right here, okay. Oh, is it in this box right here? Ask this. this four, that's why I looked at your meter. Wait, excuse me, I'm sorry. Wait, are you Jay? Yeah, is this Montoya still or no? Montoya, but there's no J. That's so bizarre. Dave, are you Dave? I'm sorry to be rude, man. I'm Johnny, I don't know. Did, 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 did Hector or anybody tell you what we were doing out here? No, my mom's here. Your mom's here, does she own the house? Yeah. Or, Oh, okay. Is, is she around actually? Yeah. Yeah, do you mind gra grabbing her really quick? So here's a huge tip for you to be able to talk to anybody that's outside of their house without being annoying or putting the person in survival mode. 
We saw this guy standing out in front of his lawn. He was mowing his lawn, clearly watching us talk to the other people nearby. And so to make this a really easy icebreaker, I started to walk past his house. I pulled up the name of the homeowner on my knocking app, whatever knocking app you work, as long as you have their name, this will work. And I went, hey, are you Mr. So-and-so? Oh, I've been, I've been meaning to talk to you. And then just calling them out and saying, are you Mr. So-and-so and having their name? I've been meaning to talk to you, then go right into your pitch. Now, one piece of warning with this. If you see somebody that's pulling up into their driveway and they're about to unload a bunch of groceries or they got a bunch of kids with them that they're unloading, still take their name, still say that same thing. Hey, are you so-and-so? But say, I'm actually running to another home right now, but I gotta stop by here and update you what's going on with your power. It's super important. And then swing back by later and show them what's going on. Yeah. Hi, Christina. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you tonight. I, I don't know, did any of your neighbors tell you guys we'd be, we'd be dropping by? You guys are like our last stop out. We're doing the update to your guys' power grid. I don't know if you guys saw, um, but there's gonna be some new taxes added to everyone's electric bills. Um, it's been all over the news. A lot of your neighbors are pretty upset. And so the state, they, they passed a mandate where they're requiring 60% of all these homes, these ones included, to have their power coming from a local source. Make sure you're always staying up to date with all the changing legislation that's going on around solar. As you guys know that it's kind of a constant game of whack-a-mole between the utilities and us, and it's important that you stay more informed of what's going on with your customers' electric rates than even they are. This is your job. Can you remember what your electric bill was here even 20 years ago? Oh my God, no, because my husband used to pay all the bills. Oh, did he? I never knew anything how much. Sounds like a great guy. What is it nowadays for you? Is it over 300? No. Good. I think it was like 174. That's awesome. That's exactly where we need you to be. So I have to do two things. Um, I just look at the little chart on your bill and then I got to look at the meter. Which side is the meter on? Is it over there? In the back. In the back? Okay. I'm going to go take a look at that. You're like my last stop out. So thank you for being patient. I'm normally not out this late. The goal here is to build interest. So I'm going to use a bit of confusion as well as some intriguing points to be able to catch their attention. Once I'm past that point and I have their interest, my goal is to deliver my message. And simplicity is key in that. Let's just break down the word. What is simplicity? Simple city. It's a town full of people that are simple. That's a low income neighborhood. So simple people, simple message. Keep it tight. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, do you know when you last updated this or would you know? I'll show you a picture of it. I'm, I was actually gonna ask you a quick question about this. Has this ever been updated to your knowledge? This looks a little newer. How long ago was this done, do you know? I have no idea. Okay. You do luckily have open slots right here, which is helpful. I'm not sure what the load capacity is, but I'm gonna take a look at that later. It's just more about the electrician side, electrical side. Mm -hmm. um, but if it works out, it won't cost you anything out of pocket and it's just gotta be an immediate reduction on your bill. That's the rule with this. It can't cost you more. Otherwise, we can't get the program approved. It's California. You know how it is out here. Everything has red tape, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if it does work out, like I said, we'll have power back up on the house, which is important. So you've built a lot of value in the conversation. Most people are amateurs and go, it's going to save you money right away. Just give us a shot. Me, on the other hand, I'm going to put my value proposition inside of a pullback. How do I do that? Well, you can't participate in this program if it doesn't save you money. It's got to save you money right away. This is a cost cutting measure. This is for handsome people only. Were you able to pull up the bill, the electric bill? Granddaughter did that for me. Okay. When is she typically, is she around actually? No. Okay. When does she typically get in? She doesn't. Um, okay. She doesn't live here. What I can do is I'm going to put in the notes. I'm going to update this information really quick. I'm going to text you over my information. And then when you can, um, it'd be good to talk to your granddaughter um, about getting access to the utility bill. We just need to take a look at it. And I'll text you my information though. What's the best number to text you at? I can swing by tomorrow and I, I just get them on the phone and then, they, and then I let them know I'm here with you because they know what this project is and how it's working. Mm -hmm. And so they'll uh, give us your power usage and I'll know right away if it's something that'll work. How would you get your bill lower? What are you guys doing? Solar panel? Coupled though with a battery. No, we can't no. do it without the battery. No, I don't want them. That's how we do it. And so it just immediately lowers your bill. No, I don't want them. Yeah? I'm curious, what's the biggest question you have about that? Because, yeah, if you had a bad experience with them, I'm curious. No, not me, my, uh, my friends. A lot of the times the person you're talking to has an objection that they haven't told you, or maybe they haven't even articulated it yet. Now I'm going to validate what her friend said and be like, yeah, they were completely right. Getting solar back then was not the best deal. A lot of things have changed since then. What I'm doing is I'm not saying your friends are wrong. I'm going, yeah, they were probably right. They, I, can, I know exactly why they had that problem. Because if you can be the one that knows exactly why somebody else had a problem with this service, then that pretty much guarantees that they're not gonna have the problem the second time with you because you have a level of awareness about it. So keep that in mind. How long ago did they get it? Do you remember? Uh, probably 
started like four years ago. Yeah, they would be right too, because four years ago, even three years ago, it was a really bad idea. I don't want him. Yeah. That's it. I don't want him. Well, what's going to end up happening is if we can't get it done, then the utilities are already scheduled to go up. That's what's been on the news. That's why they brought us out here. Because what's going to happen is you're about to get a $40 to $50 increase on the bill, and we have no control over that. And so the only way we can combat it is just making your power. So that's why the state passed this. Because four years ago, you couldn't do this. You had to buy them or lease them, and that was a big headache. Mm -hmm. If you were me, when would be the best time to catch you around here? Because we'll be out here a lot over the next few days. Five. About five o'clock? OK. Right. It was nice meeting you, Sylvia. I'll see you tomorrow. Nice meeting you. Thank you for keeping the dog at bay. That wraps up our video on how to knock in lower income neighborhoods. Guys, they really are a gold mine, so don't be afraid to approach them. Also, if you want to get some good one-on-one -on -one in-person training, we host events all around the country in both California, Texas, and Florida, where we do sales blitzes, where we select a certain number of people to be able to come out for a 10-day intensive course. So if you're interested in working in any of those states temporarily, we're doing blitz programs. Or if you're interested in living them in them year round and want to work in a year round team, we're also available in those states. And so if you want to know the dates on those announcements, make sure that you sign up for the newsletter below. We announce the dates on those blitzes regularly. We are select with the number of people that we do take on that trip. And so if you don't get a reply right away, stay persistent. And so I want to know though, what do you guys think? What are some of the tips that you guys like and you found success with in low income neighborhoods? Please comment below and let us know. So that wraps up the ghetto. And we found a kitten that escaped from over here. Now we're in a moral predicament that many reps will find themselves in at some point this summer. Can't tell you how many reps I've met that brought home a stray dog that followed them. And I think this little guy is going to come home with me. You don't get free kittens in the rich neighborhood.